Hi, Leah. Welcome to your mid-November reading. The eclipse was yesterday. <clears throat> Happy eclipse. So this is basically your extended, but we're switching the extendeds from what they are to a mid-month reading. So you get two readings a month instead of one. And we're still going to do some extended work, but it's all on Patreon. So that's the point. All right. Take a deep breath. And let's see what we see. You guys are coming back out of your dens. Time for the winter hunt, perhaps. Feeling good after a period of stagnation and stress. Perhaps because of work perhaps because of health, perhaps because of some emotional tumult, you were made to sit down, lay down, be still for a prolonged period of time. Not your favorite thing, but look how much harmony and beauty comes out of it. Hello, Leo. Your time isn't coming. Your time is now. And I think somewhere in that isolation, you knew. You know, when you were going through it, you were like, mm. <laughs> my time is coming. My time is now. And there you have this very steady support of that Taurus energy. Either a Taurus or the institution, the institution of marriage, the, <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me the traditional life, you know, 2.5 kids, white picket fence, leaning into that which gives you security, leaning into that which makes you feel grounded after a period of uncertainty and uh, quite a lot of pain, right? Where your power has been tested and it's just a battle between you and you. You feel some grounding. <laughs> like mid-November in a in a week or so you start to feel grounded and and things make sense and okay does somebody have my back yes and you feel like they have your back and it's not just something you have to uh make yourself believe now this is also a time where you're capable of doing really big things in work, in business, your luck is just very on point. I don't know if you could tell. Oh, okay, all right. I don't know if you can tell yet. <laughs> but everything seems to line up in your favor. And the magician card is interesting here because I think here it comes up as something that will prompt even more abundance in your life. And what is the magician card? The magician card says, look at, look at what you have in front of you. Look at all the different lives you've lived, the things you know, the talents you have. And let's reimagine a way for you to live based on what you have in the table in front of you, meaning what a symbolic idea of all your experiences, all the knowledge you've picked up, all the things you know and have done. And let's make something out of them, something new. Not necessarily something true. Okay, because the Magician card does have that very Gemini element to it. Not necessarily something that's true, just something that's new. Now, if I were you, I would err on the side of keeping it innovative and honest. But either way, whether it's innovative and honest or innovative and just kind of a repackage, it doesn't matter. It still leads to great abundance because you're taking what you know you're consolidating your experiences and repackaging them. So if we were looking at this from the point of view of a student, for those of you who are in school, this is you looking at your credits and being like, yeah, maybe I could, couldn't I major in this or that instead? Wouldn't it, like, couldn't I get as just as many, couldn't I actually take the credits I already have and minor in this? And You know, you, so exactly that. But in any area of your life, Leo, where... You have felt a little uninspired, a little too stressed out, an area of your life where you've thought, this isn't fun anymore. The fun returns because you have the grounding and security here 
to look at your life calmly, to look at what you have in front of you with ease. And that's when your mind works best. Hmm? And with that, then we have this jump start again of this flow of abundance. No need to be afraid. No need to get stuck in one of the ways that your fear will pop up and try to take you out of this momentum. And this is very much a momentum and you should guard that momentum. One of the ways that that momentum can get tripped up is if you start to doubt your grounding with either this person or this feeling, this institution, and you start to ruminate about the past. See, this is why shuffling, I know you guys like, some of you are like, I miss your face, but this is why shuffling like this is so important. Look at this. Look at this. It's just like the cards are showing. It's a rabbit hole you can fall into and it'll just hurt and hurt and hurt and hurt. There's just no reason on earth to do this. <clears throat> you don't need to do this. And there is no, as you can see, my goodness, as you can see, there is no resolution that comes from it. It just hurts and hurts and hurts. So even if it's true, even if it's valid, it doesn't go anywhere except make you deeply upset. So we just don't want to do that. We want to find a way to sublimate this Mars and Gemini energy, especially now that it's retrograde. Ooh, you want to talk about the hidden things. Come on, mom. Let's talk about when you were young. You know? Oh, yeah. You want to know all the things. You want to talk about all the things. You want to make everybody uncomfortable. And we get into Sag season. And I think you start to realize that there are a few... Um, A few pains here that are going to come up. Some hidden stuff. Probably family stuff. Or stuff about your family that informs why you are the way you are. Especially in relationships now. And it's a hard pill to swallow. Some of the things that come up. May even clue you in on some of your addiction issues. Like, oh, so that's why I do that. But, luckily... Here's this very grounding influence again that seems to bring out some very powerful, dare I say, maternal, watery instincts in you, especially if you have water placements. Security makes you really soft. As a Leo, if you feel safe, you will start to become softer and softer. Not any less fierce, not any more vulnerable, just softer. And it's really nice. There is some concern here with a mother-father dynamic. Um, I think you have to put your, why is this happening like this? I Like how many different ways do I need to turn this off? I think you need to think hard about what's more important. Is it what people see or is it what you need? You seem to be at a crossroads here, actually. And how you're perceived is running like very high on, prior on the priority list right now. I would be careful to not sacrifice my needs to someone else's larger ambitions or to even what people have convinced you your own ambitions are. Like, yeah, your boss, your dad, it could be either one, someone who is making you feel like you have to put your needs aside more and more to get the job done, to get the approval, to be considered a good person, child, wife, parent, whatever. And that kind of shameful shame-laced, guilt-tripping. It's like you feel it, you sense it coming. You know when you know someone's going to ask you to do something they shouldn't, 
like your stomach drops, you know, because you don't want to be, you can't say no, you're just too generous that way. And then it ends up like the things that people are asking are so out of line and they should never ask. And then you have to say yes and they turn into tower moments because of course they're tower moments, which is why nobody should have asked you to do that in the first place. Ah. <clears throat> so whatever you do to make it look good or so other people will approve, no matter how deep that driving force is within you, no matter how satisfying it is to feel like the people around you approve of you, you're doing it at the expense of your happiness, your emotional stability. There's a level of calm that you need to have in your life to just be able to, you know, get through it and this will disrupt that calm. So choices essentially that right now make your life easier, at least to how it seems from the outside, ultimately make your life a lot more difficult because of what they cause in your internal life. Your external life survives. It looks great. It's like, yes, everything's fine. But the internal life, <clears throat> it can suffer and it can lead to sadness and isolation. It can lead to feeling like people have taken from you, like they've betrayed you, like you've been wronged. So we want to stay on the right side of all this. We want to communicate openly and freely. We don't want our vices to get the best of us and for us to sink into a hole and start to see some external as a way to, you know, make all our problems go away. We can choose to stand by ourselves and stand in our power and then this person comes along anyway because they are very attracted to this person. How could they not be? So what's a better idea? Being upset or being aggressive or chasing this person or being sad about it, which is a way of energetically chasing them? Or is it smarter to just become their obvious match and have them come to you? Dominate. Okay. Now, when we look into December, let's see if this chaos dies down at all. <laughs> Looking at very, at the very beginning of December. Yeah, you know, focus comes back into it. We have, you know, Sag season is really starting to get underway. A lot of direction, a lot of good luck, a lot of generosity. You can get into a great groove of making money and feeling good and going out and making money and feeling good. And you know, when you get into those grooves, months, years can pass and you just feel wonderful. And it's nice to see that you're about to approach another one of those times. Um, if you have a Libra in your life, it is a great time to spend a little, you know, quality with them because they complement so much this energy of wanting to feel free and successful and motivated to go out and just, you know, build more, do more, live more. If you're in a space where you're making a lot of money, you can talk to them about money. They'll never get bored talking about money. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a good energy for you right now. Also, they're, as their na name implies, but now the judgment card just punctuates it. They're quite honest if you ask them about things they don't that don't in any way have to do with their ego they'll tell you exactly the truth you know if you ask them something about you they'll tell you the truth there's no confusion there now if you're actually romantically involved with a libra and you feel like they might be purposefully trying to confuse you once again do not be confused do not try to figure it out this is not britney spears just attract them how nine of pentacles Queen of Pentacles, just attract them. And this sort of stuff works really well, excuse me, during Scorpio season. It's the perfect time for it. 
everything's already predisposed to being highly suggestible. Everything's kind of spooky, right? It's getting dark. Now, if you're dealing specifically with, or, or you can use this as an energy of reinvention. Now, if you're dealing specifically with a Scorpio and you're like, what am I supposed to do? I'm talking to you, Leo rising. Do nothing. Again, the power of great receptivity. Do nothing, says the high priestess. Step back. Step back between the black and the white where you not being together is nothing. Step back where the five of pentacles can't even exist. Step back where the only thing that's real is love. Do you understand where I'm going with this? You get it? All right. One last look. Let's see, let's see. <laughs> the cards are like, I'm not going to give it to you. <laughs> a lot of potential, a lot of love, a lot of concern, a lot of good-natured, helpful discourse and friendship and good times. Be careful that you don't get too attached if it's a Virgo. Be careful that you don't get too attached if it's an Aquarius. Just be honest about your feelings. Don't get insecure about their feelings. Just talk to them and let them give them time to work themselves up and come back around to you. Do not fight with them. It's only going to isolate you and upset you. And the things you're fighting about are a mindset where you are most likely in the wrong and you just can't see it, which is what the hangman is about. And they're trying to be patient and, you know, understanding. But they're also ambitious and they want a certain stability in their life as well. And your Mars in Gemini retrograde behavior is driving them crazy. And then at this lunar eclipse, you had an opportunity or have an opportunity still for the next six months to think up a really grand idea, a really grand idea that you can make a lot of money off of. Even if you start really small. And it may just be the ultimate purpose of your life. Hmm. Good. Love you.